Okay, so, um, spacing. How do you space the uh, guides? Uh, just type in rod building or, or guide spacing chart, or you'll get any number of websites. They'll come up with all kinds of charts. And some of these measurements are just sort of standard measurements. There is a way a lot of your professional guys will just place the guides as they see fit for that particular rod, like they'll measure it and put the choke point on and they'll measure it and space it out, do static load testing, things like that. I don't have time for all that. I'm just gonna get something that marks right here and be done with it, okay? I just get the chart, the chart for these nine foot spinning type rods that I have. Any number of websites have exactly the same measurements, you know, five inches, you know, once you place the tip top on, you're going to measure down five inches. You're going to place your second guide, ten and a half inches, your third guide, on, so on, so forth, all the way down to sixty-eight and a half inches. So how do I do that? Oh, I just use a tape measure, and let's get our. I use a tape measure and a colored pencil. Uh, if I can find the colored pencils again. Um, use the white or the yellow. I wonder how the yellow would show up. I don't know. We'll just try it. And so um, and so I can put these measurements here in the video if you like and um, this is where a rod building bench would actually uh, be very very nice. Um, so we have that guy on there and basically all we're gonna do is uh, now you had a two by four. You could just sit here and measure these things out exactly where you want the thread to start, where you want the thread to stop, where you want the center of the eye to form, and all that sort of thing. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is just go here and measure this out with the tape measure. Put it up against there, five inches. Ten point five inches. Next is sixteen point five inches. Spinning guides almost always tend to be twenty three point five inches. Okay, the next is, let's check them off if you want to, you can't really see it, 32 inches even, down to 32 inches even, right there, 32 inches even, 42 inches even, and so I figure, you know, And again, even if I were a custom builder, oh, not really marking all that well. Uh, I was gonna get the white one. The yellow one's not marking all that well, it seems like to me. So we'll get the white one. 42 inches. Yeah, that's better. And uh, 53 inches. three inches and then the other 68 and a half inches will be see it was 53 68 and a half we'll just have to wait until we can get it yeah that's just a five inch thing so we'll just have to add eight inches mark 60 and then add eight inches and and which means that'll be on that blank right there but we'll let that dry and cure first, and we can mark and put that on later. And so this, that's confirmed that we have that one and that one. We still have to do that one. That way we can keep track of it. And again, I'll put these in the link down there in the video or the, the whatever. Okay. Um, 
So from then, it's, it's just a matter of wrapping all the eyes exactly the way I do it. Now, let me show you how I, um, let's see, we've got some other colors here. We can get one of the darker colors. Maybe I don't put black, but I guess they figure you just use a regular pencil if you wanted black, right? So I have essentially three size eyes on here, right? And what size eyes? Yeah, okay, so this is sort of the placement. And this is the, the guide itself. So for the, this guy is going to use the number 30 guide. All right. This guy is going to use the number 16. And every single one of these are going to use number 8s. All the way from, right, from here on down, right? And then we have the number eight tip top. I guess we can put that on there. But again, I've already showed you how I do my tip top. So, you know, what that means is if we draw the blank, let's just assume that's a nine foot blank. See, the first number 30 guide will go here. And then it will be like the number 16 and then eights. You know, just say that this is the real here, you know, or whatever. I don't know how to draw. I mean, I don't know how to draw. So, you know, and then the, you know, just at the spacings that we said there, all the way out, and so that's the rod there, if you will. Okay. Just, uh, well, that's a pathetic reel, eh? What do you think? <laughs> oh gosh, so the number 30, you know, the 30, the 16, the 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. The idea is I'm gathering up the line as quickly as I can and getting it to the small guide, you know, from here, right there, and then it's just straight out to the tip, you know, straight shooting out to the tip. That's a whole different sort of philosophy as opposed to most spinning rods where it just has, you know, you, where you might have a 30 and then a 25 and then a 20 and then a 16 and then a 12 and then a 10 and then an 8 and then a 7 and a 6. All right, that's the old school way of doing it. This is, this is, this way of doing it is simpler for me, the builder, you know, and it, uh, to me, it just looks better. And uh, apparently it helps you cast better cast longer uh, now I haven't tested that but you know the guys at Fuji and the guys they spend millions of dollars on this stuff and although the Fuji guys isn't quite this radical it, it definitely involves the same concept to get the small get down to the smallest eye as quickly as possible and then use the same eyes you know you're just gathering that rope into a cone into as small a space as possible then shoot it straight out the tip you know so it's almost like fly fishing. It's almost like, a, again, a fly rod. What does a fly rod do? You have your stripper guide here. You might have a second stripper guide here, depending on the length of rod. And then it's all the same wire snake eyes all the way up to the front. It's basically the same concept. I'm just simply using, I'm just simply using actual, you know, these are silicone, not silicone, these are aluminum oxide, you know, tips and that, that's the only difference and so now that you have it marked you follow the same pattern of how I showed you to do this one for the rest of them so I don't really need to show you that and that's the easy that's becomes easy that's what you can do while you're watching TV while you're you know while you're doing it you can do it I can almost do it uh, while I'm watching TV watching videos and that's what I love doing so again this one will go on last once that's cured and so that's why I like a double rod here Really, we could, this is a number 16, but we actually could probably make it a number 20. Uh, probably should have done that instead, but I figure 30, 16, and then 8, and we can just position, we can finagle the positioning of these last two, and to, these really these last three to gather the rope and get it down to there, and just to see what we can do. But anyway, that's how I determine the spacing of... 
the guides. Let's move on to getting them on there. And once I do it, we'll come back and glue them up. The good part, the good part about having a double, uh, you know, two-piece rod is I can one piece can be drying and curing, and I can actually start working on the other piece. So let's just go ahead and transition and start working on the the tip of it. What we're going to do is place our tip top guide. So what we're going to do is get our crayon back out. Our, we're going to mark this all the way up the blank this time. Oh, I know that that's our point there. And um, yeah, I can get off on this if we're not too careful. But um, one of the things that you know I tell people is I don't use a tip top guide. Why? Because, um, oh, because, um, uh, mark that all the way out. Just take your time. Take your time, mark that on out. So now that whole thing's marked. Why? Because if you look at, uh, let's see if we can use an example here. Yeah, one of these rods. Look at this little rod. It's one of my dad's old rods. You may not be able to see that, but that tip top guide changes the angle of the line ever so slightly back toward the blank. Right? Because the center line. Even though these are the same, essentially, well, that's a little bit bigger, but if, even if these are the same size eyes, if you look at this eye, it's higher up. The center line of the eye is higher up in relation to the bottom of the blank. And so what you want that, you don't want that to be in a good line here and then all of a sudden change direction there. Uh, you want it to have a consistent direction throughout. And so what I do is I don't even fool around with the tip top guide. So whatever the smallest guide I'm going to use, and I've got number eights here, I'm going to use that as the tip top guide, and that's the first guide that I'll place um, on the rod. And I'm going to get my thread here, and the only thread I'm using is the same thread that you've seen me use here. This is actually embroidery thread of all things. Um, but once I coat it all with epoxy, the real strength is in the epoxy. And um, I have some upholstery thread, uh, really a very strong thread, upholstery thread uh, here. But it's so fuzzy, I hate, I hate it. The embroidery thread is a lot less fuzzy and looks a lot better. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, always use number eights that way if I because I also use I also use this thing in the summertime uh, for slip corking for the channel catfish in the summer right now we're just sort of blue catfishing from now on until probably May you know probably the first full moon of May or so we'll probably just be fishing with um... now a lot of people will do this with a rod uh, vice but I don't I just have enough propped up stuff around that I'll just do it that way instead and so what I gotta do is you're gonna take that yeah, now take that I'm gonna put it right on the end here be careful hold your rod don't be very careful with it I need to build me a rod building a vise wouldn't take but a few minutes I mean a few and that's that's going to be the tip top guide just like that and it's going to be lashed on just like everything else but usually in order to do that we need to take a piece of tape again masking tape is your friend 
when it comes to these sorts of things. So you take a piece here, something like that, about like that. Oh, don't get on there. And um, a rod building uh, vise would work just like the fly tying vise. You know, it, it, you know, you'd be able to turn it around and things. But uh, you know, I've never I've built all my rods just like this, basically. And what I'll do here is take that piece of tape there and just tape that down. Oh, come on, don't give me any problems. Just like that. Okay. Now, if you really wanted to be nitpicky, you would uh, start to um, you would actually file down these guides on a uh, on a round type of file to make sure that they're flat and all that thing and get it all like that but I'm just not gonna do all that I just don't feel like it and I always get the direction mixed up so we need another piece of tape again tape is your friend And <clears throat> you're going to take the tape, put it on the end like that. I'm going to kind of tape it to the blank just temporarily, sort of like that. And what I'm going to do is just like I was on the fly tying vise there, I'm going to get it started. I always do this in like reverse of how everybody says I should. I'm going to have to retape this because I don't have it. I've got it on the wrong end. I always start at the end and go back down <laughs> just because that's just it just works the best the way I do it, you know. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Take that once again. Take this guy. Make sure we have our mark there. Got that guy. And we're going to mark the very, just take the very sort of end of it. Try to make sure we have it, you know, like that take the very end of the foot sort of like that it is never going to work perfectly so just get it on the best way you can that's one of the reasons why the tip top guide is more convenient to, to, to tie actually but you know I to, to install rather I should say but I'd rather do it this way just because it's just my way of doing it one of the things I've noticed in life is I hardly ever do things the way everybody else does them and it, you know, because typically in life for me, it's just been that whenever I do things the way everybody else does it, it just doesn't seem to work for me. So, and so it's just like tying a fly, getting started there. So we're just a couple of loops there and we're going to come back and secure the thread over on, on itself. Just like that, and I'm, and I'm, in fact, I'm using a fly tying. I'm using a fly tying. I just have to be careful. I'm really gonna have to. I hear a house fly. Dead middle of December. I'm hearing house flies. Unbelievable. So there's that, and so just so you can see it, perhaps um, what I've done here is um, like 
keep forgetting that you can't see it when it's back like that, but um, what I've done here is started the thread, and I'll you know, taped it down, aligned it, started the thread, got it locked back onto itself, and now I am just, to me this is the easier part, I, I usually do this while I'm watching videos or something on YouTube or something because I can do this almost mindlessly because it's exactly the same way those of you who bought my floats this is exactly the same way I wrap the floats <laughs> right there's just no difference the only thing is it's a little tricky here with the single foot guides are a little bit more tricky the double foot guides because I can tape one side down securely wrap one side without worrying about it losing its uh, footing and I can untape it without you know fear of any uh, loss or any losing its position but here I just have to just take my time be careful and go for it like that now I think that red thread will look nice and so what I do is just I just have the uh, see how it just changed on me just keep repositioning it and it'll be fine once we get the uh, again once we get the um, pull it out there so you can see it and it gets easier as the blank gets thicker as we move down the blank, the diameter of the blank will get wider, and it gets uh, easier to do this. And as the and um, so this is the basic method that I use to put all my eyes on. Don't have a machine, as you can see, it's just resting on the desk here. I'm just twisting it all by hand. It's just by hand, you know. This is how I've built all the rods that you've seen me use. I built them all the same way, just by hand. No machines, no devices. It's amazing. I spent the money to buy this expensive fly tying vise, but yet I won't. I'm building all these rods and won't won't take the time to make even the simplest sort of uh, rod uh, building device thingy so now that's rolled off there and we're just gonna extend it on down a few a few millimeters as they would say across the pond and, you know it looks kind of neat and I'm not doing any decorative wraps or anything like that We're gonna show you how I finish the knot here. This is some 20 pound Dacron that I have. I've used this in jug fishing and whatnot. And just take that overhand knot. That's what you want. That right there. You can trim off the tag ends here. Trim off the tag ends. And what you want to do is just like when I do my it's exactly the same thing with my fishing floats there's really no difference in rod building and float making the only difference is you just it's like building one epically long fishing float that has a handle on the end <laughs> it's just, as far as I'm concerned the way I build them at least uh, about five six maybe ten wraps there Very, don't be heavy-handed, all right? Because it's, it's, it's you know graphite tip things like that. It's just sensitive, and you're going to take that and you're going to insert that right back through that loop. Pull it taut, but make sure you pull both of them taut there. Then, oh gosh, this is where you got to be careful. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. I got back through that time. Um, and there we
sure we have that locked in place. The thread's locked is what I'm saying. And now we take our thread here, snip, and now we have our little tip top guide on. And then the uh, next step is let's give our measurements and I'll show you how I measure these and secure them. And so uh, once I do that, we will be well on our way to get this rod build up and going. Okay. This always happens. There's always one little thread that just won't snug up. But anyway, that'll work. I mean, it's on there. It's secure. Um, it's is it aligned it's kind of hard to tell because once you start doing this your fingers will start rubbing everything off and so no oh, it isn't but you can adjust these yeah you can adjust them once they're on there they're actually fairly secure on there because the threads locked in it's secure but don't be too manly with it just sort of let it go and that's that's how I do my tip top guides okay all my tip top guides are like that when I make them myself I, I find it it's you know, better. It's uh, I I prefer it. Uh, it's just an alternative way of thinking about it. It's a good way to do it, and uh, go and do likewise. And then uh, let's go get the measurement.